let me introduce you to my wife, Felicia Churchill. We're just going to start by giving them each an opportunity to introduce themselves. And we're also going to invite everyone who has a cell phone to the um, And if you want to talk on your cell phone, we'll invite you to go out in the courtyard with your phone. Um, just like if you were in school. Uh, so what we'll do is when we're doing the questions, you guys will take turns answering. So whoever goes first with one question will go. The next person will go first. Um, but we didn't decide who was going to speak first, so do you guys want to flip a coin for the first place? Oh, okay, great. All right, do your introduction. Welcome. I'm not going to sing, I promise. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to say I'm jealous everybody out there is having a beer and a glass of wine. I wish I was there. Um, my name is Jay Walsh, if you don't know. I am one raised Westland guy. I am. Um, I'm a graduate of Lynn Tech, class of 99. I'm a licensed member of the city of Lynn. I've been on the board about four years, so I've had the opportunity to do a lot of work with the woods um, as far as conservation issues come up and with the uh, river also, the Saugus River. Uh, I'm on the Saugus River Watershed Committee also. I'm uh, married to my my wife here. We had an anniversary yesterday. Uh, we married seven years, but we've been together for 17 years. So, uh, so, I, um, I'm also the head organizer currently for the Lynn Christmas program. Um, it's something that's been a staple in the city here, and I'm proud to be the organizer for it. So, thank you. I like jam. Looking at you guys having a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I look out, and, and there's a lot of stickers out here tonight. Uh, I think I only see three neutral, undecided voters between Jimmy and, and Rick Stabbard and my wife here. Um, so of the three of you, I guess I'll have to sell myself tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so honey, I think I could appreciate, appreciate the vote. <laughs> I, I know that, like Jim said, Ward 7 is going to be served uh, well, no matter who gets elected this upcoming election year. Myself, I'm a lifelong Lynn resident. Married to my wife for almost 15 years now. We have three children. Uh, my oldest was just getting started with high school, so it's been a busy week uh, getting back in the flow of everything. I've been a licensed funeral director in the city for almost 20 years, uh, and I know what it's like to serve people to, to listen. And I think that's my gift that I can bring forward as a counselor: the ability to listen to others' concerns. These aren't my great ideas that I'm bringing forward. Uh, I'm not running on that. I'm not a think tank. I'm not paid to, th to think like some people you know, graduated from Harvard, et cetera. You know, it's my job to, to, to listen to those ideas and bring those best ideas forward uh, to improve the city. And, and I know that's what, that's what I can do. And that's why I, I, I've chosen to run. I have my family support. I have my work support. I'm in a job where I'm always serving the community. Responsive. If, if, if there's a question, uh, someone needs to reach out to me. I have the time uh, to be able to respond effectively, uh, and I look forward to, to, to more debates and, and to your questions. And, and, and you, I know uh, it's an honor to, to be able to serve here, uh, and I hope for your support. Thank you. So the first question is just what is your positive vision for Lynn? Um, things that we can grow and improve on um, and build, whatever you'd like to say. So a couple of the things that I, I see in the city as being things that we worked on and grow, they're going to be especially with the waterfront. Uh, we have large tracts of land down the waterfront that are right for the development. Um, I've actually been involved in some of that currently as the chairman for the conservation board and overlooking some of the, the wetlands delineation that's actually happening. Um, I see that that's going to be a big issue coming forward with the vision as far as we're going to have uh, mixed residential use probably with some, some restaurants and things down. Um, I also can see the waterfront growing as a destination place for people that own boats. I own a boat. 
I know my, my parents have a boat and we, we travel uh, locally on the boats here and we look for places to go and try to, you know, like we've been over to um, Hull a couple of times and there's places over there in restaurants. So I see that as a vision for the waterfront down there um, and an opportunity to try to make sure that with Lynn's being the people on the map here, you know, I mean, you can see that everything's moving forward. Uh, we have people from Boston moving in around here now. Um, you know, and it's, it's something that we need to keep striving for and work on, so. Uh, last Friday, I, I was fortunate to, to start the uh, Questions with Candidates uh, series with the Lynn item. And, and, and what, we, what I chose to discuss uh, with Gabe was Barry Park. I know I've grown up around parks. I grew up in Ward 1. I know what the parks were like there. And in this past May, uh, my family and my committee sponsored a, a cleanup day at Barry Park. And, and not to draw attention to our campaign, but draw attention to Barry Park. It's an underutilized park. It, it has so much to offer. And, and what we did that day was, was amazing. We cleaned up the park right after the winter uh, and really made a difference. And one week later, I went back down there. And everything that we had done had returned. Uh, the trash is still there, and and you kind of you, you, you sit there and you and you look and you say we, we you question it and you say how do we get it to stay clean and how do we teach the kids to clean up after themselves and but then you turn to the left and you see this the stance you know and you kind of say to the city well, you're setting the example. Here. And, and, and the example that I want to say is, if I came home and, and I threw my clothes on the floor and I kicked my shoes off, but then I yell at my kids for doing the same thing, it, it's really not solving anything. You know, it, the, the city's just as much to blame as the younger generation, and, and, and that's, you know, these parks here in the city are, are from, for a lot of the kids, the only thing they have. Um, I see Barry Park as an epicenter. Um, it's underutilized what we've done and uh, what, what other cities and towns have done with second uh, turf fields. Uh, what they've done across from Breed. I know a lot of you older than myself remember what it looked like across from Breed with the Breed field with the reeds. Uh, and it was someone's vision to, to develop that, continue that open space, not, not mixed use, but open space for the kids. And now those ball fields host some of the major tournaments in the state. And that kind of changes the perception that other cities and towns have towards Lynn. We did the same thing with Manning Field. When it was time to come down, as historic as it was, it came down. It was raised. It took a couple of years. It took a couple of dollars. But now we built it. The premier destinations for some of the state MIAA tournament games. They host soccer, football playoff tournaments. They host some of the major band competitions across the United States. That's what my vision is for Barry Park. I know that we can do it, um, and, and, and that's what I want. I really want to see something like that done, and that, that's what I'm going to be fighting for. Okay, the next question is the flip side of that same question. What do you think are our biggest challenges for Lynn? Some of our biggest challenges for Lynn, you know, Lynn has been a diverse city for years and years and years. Uh, the challenges that we do face are our economic, you know, uh, economics. Uh, we're not funded correctly by the state and federal government, plain and simple. As a counselor, I, I, will, I, I will fight to increase the budgets uh, set forth by the state and the federal government to help subsidize some of these programs that, that support the city. The city shouldn't be in it alone. Uh, we are, again, we're a diverse community of immigrants that are coming to schools. We need assistance from the state and federal government that are forcing these changes upon our city. We welcome them with open arms, but we do need the help. And it's up to the state and federal government to, to supply that help to us. The issues that I think we can all relate to here, that's going to be a big challenge, it's going to be drugs. I mean, I, I think everybody here has somehow has been, you know, overwhelmed by the loss of the family or all 
also just encountering the needles on the street and things like that. And I see that as one of the biggest things that we're going to have to overcome. I don't know what the answer is as far as standing here, and I, I, I wish I did, but I can see that as being an issue that, I mean, the other day my, my daughter was walking down by the edge of the water and there was a needle there, you know, and I had to pick it up and show it to her, you know, and I think as a challenge, as a parent, we're going to have to explain that to our children. I've said this to some people in the audience here before, you know, like, like being a Westland kid, you know, you're kind of like a knockdown, drag out type person, not much that kind of scares you, you know, but that scares me as a parent. I don't know, you know, going into this with my daughter, she's five, how do we explain that to them? You know, how do we do that? But we have to do that as a community, we have to do it as a country and a nation too. I mean, this is a big problem right now. And that, that seems to me one of the largest issues that we're going to have to overcome as a city. actually the most popular question from customers coming in and telling us what they wanted asked and it is simply um, knowing that we, we want people who are workers and we like people who have families but at the same time we want to know that if we call because there's a needle on the sidewalk or something like that how do we know that you're going to balance all of your work and family Get my wife and my children. But I, I, it's a balance. I mean, we're going, I know I'm going through now, I'm sure Brian's going through now too. You're out there, you know, you're working hard. It's something you make time for. It's something you're going to have to. I work locally, I work for the General Electric Company, but I'm the vice president for the union over there, Local 201. So, um, you know, if the phone calls come in, I will respond to it. It's a, it's a business that we're kind of in, customer service end. Um, we have people that are, that are members of the union that call in with problems and issues. We find that balance in time. We, we, at the Union Hall itself, we have, we're amalgamated, so we have three or four different groups of people we have to be able to split our time between. Um, as far as you know, family life goes, I'm a local kid. I've always found time. I promise you that I will be the counselor that makes sure that returns your call and make sure that we get an answer to you in a timely manner. You know, as far as going forward and, and splitting the time with my wife, and she wants to be involved with it also as a family. So I'm looking at this as a family of, uh, opportunity that we can help with the city. Before I chose to, to, to run as a candidate, I did check with my family. My wife is very supportive of this. I work. They're very supportive of this. I am in a job that's community based. The funeral director is what we do. I haven't missed a call yet. We're very responsive to the community. I know if you stay down all the day or the middle of the night, taking calls from families. We're taking worse calls at 2 in the morning than someone's driveway not being plowed. I'm always there. If I didn't have the support, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I did. I wouldn't do that to the residents of Ward 7. I'm making my time available for you. I'm not running for me. I'm running for you. It's, it's, it's what I do what God wants me to do as a funeral director and it's what I want to do now is to serve the city and give back. Alright, another question a lot of people are concerned about is, I think we all know that Partners is trying to um, close down or minimize the services at Union Hospital and we're wondering if you have any thoughts on that Understanding that it, it may not be something that the council will need to just say no, we can't have it. But if you have thoughts on that, that you'd like to share with us. So I, I've, I've actually I've met with some of the other unions that are involved. You know, we're going to lose this hospital, and it's not something I think anybody here, including Brian, I believe, also is just not in favor of. We don't want to see that go. Um, I've, I've sat down with the other union members, and, and a couple of the questions that they're asking is, what happens to us? You know, what happens if the hospital closes as far as their livelihood goes? And I've been to some of the union meetings, and, and these are questions they're asking, and we're trying to talk with partner partners or with the union people and try to get an idea and a sense of where, where they're going to, you know, try to get these people to roll over into Salem. How are they going to be integrated? They have questions about service. Like, you know, is it something that their, their 15 years at Union Hospital is going to translate into 15 years over in Salem? So 
this is something that, you know, I, I do not want to see the hospital close. I don't know what the input from the city council can be. Um, I, I would support keeping it here, fighting for it, whatever that may be. But at the same token, the people who are in the union, the union have to start looking at what's going to happen if it doesn't move forward and they have to go to Salem. I, I, these are conversations that they're having within their own membership and with their families. So I, I would support keeping the hospital there. Hospital that not only serves the land and its 90,000 residents, but the communities like Linfield, Peabody, Nahant, Saugus, they've all fought with us. It's now this bit over just about a month ago. The City Council did take a vote to pass it on to the Attorney General's office. I hope that Mara does take it uh, to the next level for us, and she fights for us. As a City Council, I see us as a, as a last last chance with eminent domain uh, somewhere along the line if, if our if our if our concerns aren't answered and, and find someone that that will service us with a few full hundred full services full acute care uh, the city this size so that's what we need We all have concerns about Lynn Woods. Uh, some of us feel that we had kind of a close call recently with the potential for um, Lynn Woods being sold and um, how that would affect our water supply. Um, what are your thoughts on that? So again, back, back to conservation um, you know, um, being on the board for four years. And I've advocated and trying to make sure that whatever the wetlands area was up off of Route 1, um, explaining you know how they can return the waters of wetlands. Um, I, I want to protect the woods. It's something that, you know, I wouldn't have been on the conservation board if there's something else that, that's very important. And I've said I'm on the Saugus River Watershed Commission, which is kind of an environmental watchdog group for the river. I live on the river, I, you know, so I support these initiatives to make sure we protect something that's so important. I mean, Lynn, but one of Lynn's identities and great things is right here in Wood 7, right? We have both the saltwater ocean and the wooded area up the street. I think that's what draws people here so close to Boston. It's something that we have to protect from that standpoint. And then also, you mentioned it, it's our water supply. I'm a farmer. I mean, I, I, I can't tell you how important it is, I think you know, to have clean water. I mean, we've seen some of the things across the country that have happened where there's droughts and major problems and contamination issues that have happened. I mean, it's a, it's a life-sustaining issue, you know, it's going to have to be supported and make sure that we have everybody um, on board for it. And I support making sure the woods, even, even in the next phase of things that I've talked and heard about, there's some other issues with some of it, and I support keeping that as we do here. size as urban as it is to have a, a forest really and, and a water supply that is abundant as it is is amazing supporting the watershed it is without a doubt a given from all the residents here i know that we switched over last week to the mwra and i don't i, mean, I can tell the difference uh, in the taste you know i, I hope certainly tell and that's a that's something special that we have here in this city uh, we're fortunate to have it we need to protect it something else that I had talked about uh, in our last debate uh, with regards to to the ocean front uh, I had gone on a tour with, with the uh, street advocate and as I had mentioned in that debate there's a homeless population that's being moved from that area. They're now in the woods. They're up off of Parkland Ave. They're up off of Pennybrook Road. They're, they're living there now. And, and it creates an unsafe situation for families and for people using the woods now. So 
the city really needs to step forward and, and come up with a solution to that issue as well. And again, you know, the, the races that they host on Wednesday nights, it, it's a gift to, to the city and to the surrounding communities, and it needs to be supported. Thank you. Um, there were a couple other questions, but you touched on them in the things that you said about other things. Um, so at this point, um, you covered everything very efficiently and effectively and positively. I'd just like to give you an opportunity to ask each other a question. And then we will, uh, I think we'll cover everything that there was, I had in mind that I would ask you. So do you want to take a minute to say something? Uh, the other questions were about opiates and uh, being a refugee city. Do you want to talk about that a little bit more? Okay. Uh, so, uh, one question was just what do we do about this opiate addiction issue? Uh, as, as you mentioned, uh, I think that every single one of us has been to a wake or has, uh, has we have really seen losses. Um, and it's not like anything that we've seen in life. And as you said, it may not be something that we can magically fix, but any thoughts on what we can do as a neighborhood and as a city to deal with that? I think everybody here has probably been awake in the past couple of weeks. this together. There's no shame in, in supporting one another. It, it's difficult, but we need to talk about it. And the more we talk about it, the more it gets, that's how people can get help. I know Gloucester um, most recently started their program where if you want help, they'll help you. If you come to the police with the, with the problem, they're, they're there to assist. I know that People in the Lynn Police Department and the government are looking into that to see how effective it's still new. I know we touched on the different drug paraphernalia found throughout the city. I know that the different local parks have my number. And my, wife, my wife will tell you that, that I'm called often um, because of my profession to carry a shop's container in my car. And to prevent any type of that unfortunate accident with the miners, they, they do call. And I'm able to collect it and probably dispose of it. I know growing up, my father had, had a bag of balls in the back of his car, or bats, or, or, or whatever season it was, that's what he had in the back of his car. And, 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 and like Jay had said, you know, it's difficult to have to explain, you know, to my kids, you know, don't touch the red box in the back of daddy's car. You know, we need to, we really need to get into this as a community. And again, it's not an individual problem. It's not a family problem. It's a community problem. And we really need to talk about it and work together to solve this problem. So, I have to say, you know, vigilance you know, on our part as a family here, and trying to notice the signs and you know, family members and friends, um, much, much to what Brian was saying, too. We, you know, we have to talk about this. You know, I think sometimes families, you know, they take the position where they're embarrassed by the situation. I've seen it in my own family. It's something that's not easy to do. You know, when you try to have the kind of conversations and, and nobody wants to talk about it, you know, we all have a tendency to be kind of high strung and proud of ourselves. And you know, we need to break down that and try to talk about it more than the city. I mean, I, I read the newspaper and you know, we all get that tight suddenly. I mean, a lot of us kind of know where that is, right? You know, there's very few people, and, and I, I think a lot of people probably know people who put it in the paper that it happened. I think that's something that's going to have to start happening. We need to tell the kids about it. This isn't something that, you know, I want to talk about. We need to keep it in the closet. Don't anybody knows that anything we see because of problem. 
you know, we might just get this wrong or whatever. We, we need to talk about this. You know, we can't just show it and be embarrassed by it. We've got to get it out there, get the people the help that they need. And then at the same time, we've got to talk to the kids. I mean, I, I have the conversation with my daughter. And, you know, as I go around the board and I'm looking at my voter ID list, and, and I'm starting to look at these and people, and I'm starting to see the gone. Or the kids that I went to school with ain't around anymore. And it starts to get me thinking. And all these numbers we look at as Paul, you know, running for office and trying to think of people we know. And I start saying, oh, they're, they're missing. You know? And I start thinking of the reasons why they're missing. And a lot of it's directly right back to the drugs. You know? Especially with the opiate addiction, you know, and, and going to high school. And I had seen friends of mine that were getting addicted to the prescription drugs. I mean, that was the root cause of a lot of what's going on. I think everybody will take that position. As a community, we need to be vigilant with it. We need to talk about it. And we have to make sure we educate the children that are going forward with this. I mean, it's something that I have the conversation with my dad about and talk about how I'm going to talk about this with my daughter. And what age is the right age to start talking about? As a five year old kid, that I have to explain, don't touch this. I just don't want her to pick it up and get stuck with it right now. Right? I mean, that's the basic thing that I'm trying to teach my daughter, and then we'll talk about as we go on. We've got to have the conversation. So I, I look back and I think, how much different are we? You know, I mean, I see people out there and been working at the meeting hall. I've had people come in that are, that are immigrant workers, and they come in, and the people that you see standing up at Home Depot, right, and they come in and they're explaining to us that they got hired for the day, and they didn't get paid. They work, you know, eight, nine, ten hours. People just drop them back off. You know? I, I, don't, I don't know if the answer is going to be within the city to deal with as much as, as an issue for the country. So, I mean, that's the biggest upbeat issue I think you see out there in the, the, the uh, presidential side. But I just want to say there's a lot of similarities between us here. There's a lot of us working on things. And I just want people to take that note and think back. Hey, you know, you know my grandmother probably had a chicken somewhere down the street, you know, or, or they probably had a great big garden outside. So when it comes to that, I, I think that that would be the best approach.
it's no different than, than what it was 70, 80, 90 years ago here in the city. Lynn has always been a diverse city. It always will be. They're part of the country that believes in helping one another. What we do need is the help from the state and federal government to support that effort. And that's what I support if elected to the city council. Something like that, I don't have anything, right? And then, of course, you know, the time you keep saying that, and you look at you, and 
as you know, you know those those are the moments that we really enjoy. I think everybody can do this. You know, and you really when you do something like this, you realize the sacrifices that you have to make in order to try to make the city better. And I, I think we all can attest to that. I think everybody as I look around has had some some sort of uh, moment with the people with the family. I know a lot of the faces here and with the children. And um, that, that's a huge, huge thing for us. As far as tying it into the city and the waterfront again, I, I've spent a lot of time with the water. I think most of us know that my family was in the fishing business. We had charter boats and we would drop people you know, from all over the place. We had a lot of people from New York. I know a lot of I'm not even a fan, just so <laughs> <laughs> But I, we had a lot of people from New York that would come out. It was a big thing for them to come here in the city of Lynn. We used to fill the boat. We'd have, you know, 60 people. Anybody in the boat. We remember going out the boat. You know, we would have a drawdown. People would come. I mean, it, the fishing business, the dynamics changed a little bit. But I think the city and, and our waterfront is still very much ripe to be changed for that type of house. I've seen it down there. I, I've been down behind uh, Building 19. I've watched, you know, the, the erosion that's happened down there. And, you know, I don't know if anyone spent any time back there, but I usually down there in the winter with my dogs and kind of walk back there. That road has been washed away, and you can't even walk down the road. It's gone. So again, we need to make that a viable piece of property that we can use as a city, and, and get the revenue made on tax base, and then make sure that we have a draw for people. People will come to me. I know the food. I know why I'm here. I think everybody in here will say why they would be. You know, we're proud of it, and I'd be proud to be part of it. Jim, that it's, this this really isn't making it easier for me to decide who to vote for, um, but I do know that we'll be well served either way because you both did a fantastic job, and I also want to say it's really nice to be in a political environment that's not a gotcha bar, where, where clearly everyone is being supported and there's a lot of positive energy. What we're proud of with Lynn and what we can do for Lynn, and it's um, made me feel good to hear. So thank you everyone for coming out. And um, I don't want to keep them here all night, but I think that they will be available for a few minutes if you had a question you wanted to ask more discreetly than, than handing me the question earlier. Um, and so you're all welcome to stay for a bit. And Jim, do you want to say anything? Okay. Thank you all so very much for coming. Thank you.